In this segment, we're going to talk about a more challenging variant of question answering called multi-hop question answering. So the data sets that we've been looking at so far, in particular the squad data set, don't really require combining multiple pieces of information. If we ask, uh, you know, when did Marie Curie win the Nobel Prize, we're basically looking for a statement that, you know, she won the Nobel Prize in this year, and we don't really need to take pieces of information from different parts of a paragraph or different documents. I mean, you might, but it's only in a small percentage of examples. So folks went and built a few different data sets to try to explicitly see if models could do this kind of multi-hop reasoning where we want to be able to take information and combine it during the question answering process. And so uh, one thing that might look like is this. Uh, so this is from a data set called Wikihop, and the question here at the bottom is not really formatted in natural language, it's more asking for a relation. So it's saying the Hanging Gardens of Mumbai are in what country? And the annotators were explicitly told to basically follow hyperlinks on Wikipedia in order to create the answer, you know, the kind of question and answer pairs. So, uh, you know, the idea here is that you have to follow the link between the Hanging Gardens and Mumbai and then recognize that Mumbai is in India. Another example of this is a data set called Hot Pot QA. And the questions here are in natural language and are quite a bit more sophisticated, let's say, than what we've seen before. So we have the question, what government position was held by the woman who played Corliss Archer in the film Kiss and Tell? So this question, unlike when did Marie Curie win the Nobel Prize, all, kind of already has some structure that indicates that we need to do multiple steps of reasoning. So if we have a bunch of documents, uh, you know, we first need to figure out who portrayed Corliss Archer in the film Kiss and Tell, and so we would ideally kind of jump from the question into this part of the document and recognize that the answer to this, let's say, sub-question is Shirley Temple. And then we say, okay, well, now we need information about what government position Shirley Temple held. So we're going to go to the article on Shirley Temple and see that she served as Chief of Protocol of the United States. Okay, so that's one example. Uh, here's another one. The Oberoi family is part of a hotel company that has a head office in what city? Uh, so again, we need to take Oberoi family, uh, kind of figure out what the hotel company is, which is the Oberoi group, and then the Ho Oberoi group is a hotel company with a head office in Delhi. So this is sort of interesting, right? Like this is a much more complex style of question, and it would be great if our models could actually do this task. Uh, and the question is, all right, so let's say we train a model on a data set consisting of these types of questions. Is the model actually doing the kind of reasoning that uh, we're depicting here? And the answer is only somewhat. So when we look at this example about the Oberoi family as part of a hotel company that has a head office in what city, it turns out you actually don't really need this intermediate link here um, because there's such high lexical overlap between the question and this sentence containing the answer. And so models actually are very good at just jumping directly to the answer, particularly when they're trained with BERT. So you might think, okay, well, the other example we saw, that one seemed more complicated, right? Um, and so remember that we needed to kind of find out who played Corliss Archer uh, and then, uh, you know, figure out what government position Shirley Temple held. So the, you know, there isn't quite the same sort of lexical overlap here, but there is still a cue that models can use. And that's the fact that we're asking about what government position was held by this woman. And when we have, even let's say we're doing answering this question over 10 retrieved documents or something like that, there are actually going to be very few government positions that occur in the context. And so the model can do a very good job at answering these questions just by learning a kind of entity type heuristic, like what type is, you know, what type should the answer be? And then let me turn, return something of that type. And what that means is that the model essentially takes a shortcut during its learning. It doesn't actually follow all of these steps, but instead is able to learn a much simpler heuristic which fits the data. And that means when we come to new data that looks like this, the model's not necessarily going to do very well. 
So in terms of quantifying how bad this is, um, some work from my lab and some others from UW uh, have looked at basically how well we can do under a variety of, uh, you know, kind of reduced settings that highlight the issues in this data set. And so uh, we looked at the WikiHop data set and it turns out you can get around 60% accuracy on this data set, which is a multiple choice data set, without using the context at all. So the questions in these relations are informative enough that we can already distinguish the right answer in quite a number of cases. And when the state of the art is only 67 or something and, and uh, not using context gives 60, it's hard to imagine that these state of the art models are really doing a lot of sophisticated reasoning um, when they're only getting an extra 7%. Uh, another test we could do is say, all right, let's, have the model only consider each sentence in isolation. And on this WikiHop data set, it turns out that the model is able to get around 50% of answers correct or 50% F token F1 um, overlap with the correct answer. So that again, you know, if a model is only considering each sentence in isolation, it cannot be doing this kind of multi-hop reasoning that these data sets were designed to test. So, while this is a interesting capability for QA systems to have, the current data sets fall a little bit short of actually you know, requiring it very strongly. And so this is a concern and it, it means that this is not necessarily the easiest path forward in terms of trying to come up with harder QA settings or harden our data sets. Regardless, there have been some recent models which are very successful at this. Um, so I'm not going to talk much about the architecture of these, um, but I'm just going to show one from Akari Asai et al. Uh, from UW, where they looked at basically taking the structure of Wikipedia and building that into the model and being able to do retrieval using hyperlinks. And so they are essentially treating the documents that you're answering these questions from as a graph and they build a pretty strong sequential retrieval model that's able to find the right context and then answer the question. Um, and so all these, pieces, all these pieces use neural models like we've seen throughout the course. Uh, we have a kind of recurrent model here for the extraction and then the, it's all kind of built on a BERT framework. So uh, really the ideas here draw on what we've already seen from other reading comprehension and question answering models and, uh, you know, but, but there's obviously a lot of sophistication in terms of putting these together and getting it to work well on this task. So this gives you a tour of multi-hop question answering and uh, what I'll say is that there are also several other settings like it where people want to focus on answering questions about num numerical reasoning and things like that. And, the general problem with these is that it becomes very hard to annotate natural data that doesn't have these sorts of flaws. We'll come back and talk about that in a few segments when we talk about annotation artifacts. Uh, but for now, that gives you a sense of what's going on in multi-hop question answering. And that's the end of this segment.